For n, a positive integer, let r of n be the sum of the remainders when n is divided by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. For example, r15 is equal to 1 plus 0 plus 3 plus 0 plus 3 plus 1 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 equals 26. How many two digit positive integers n satisfy r of n equals r of n plus 1? Okay, so what we see here is that r of n is the sum of remainders when n is divided by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So I'm actually going to write out 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 here, and, and you'll see why in a moment. Now think about what it means for r of n equals r of n plus 1. So let's say we have, let's, let's take an example, 18. And we can write down the remainders when 18 is divided by each of these nine. So the remainder when 18 is divided by two is zero, three is zero, four is two, 18 over five has remainder three, zero, four, two, zero, eight. Now, what about 19? Well, the remainder is when 19 is divided by each of these is one, one, three, four, one, five, three, one, nine. And, and it's really easy to see that, hey, for each of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, the remainder when 18 is divided by one of these goes up by one if you take 19 divided by the same one. So zero goes to one, this zero goes to this one, this two goes to this three, this three goes to this four, when you look at 18 and 19. So then you can start to think, well, in which cases would this not happen? Which cases would a number, would a remainder not go up by one? And the answer is, well, let's say you have the number um, 23 and the remainder when 23 is divided by five, no, when 23 is divided by six has remainder five, but 24 divided by six, has remainder zero. Similarly, 23 divided by four has remainder three and 24 divided by four has remainder three, remainder zero, excuse me. Right, so, and in general for, in general, um, the remainder decreases when you increase n by one when the remainder is just one less than the number you're dividing it by. So in this case, um, if you had a number n and the n, n divided by two had remainder one, then if you increased, if you increased um, n by one, then that divided by two has remainder zero. And in general, if you have like, if you take one of these, let's, we're just gonna say um, a, and you have n, when n divided by a has a remainder n minus one, then n plus one divided by a has a remainder zero. Because if you think about it, when you, when you increase this number by one, it becomes a multiple of n. And using modular arithmetic terms, you can say that n is equivalent to negative one mod a. So you can see that's the circumstance in which um, in which the which the number which the remainder goes down when n goes up by one. So that's what we're looking for, and we want some we want something very specific because if because for example for four either the remainder is going to go up by one or it's gonna go from three to zero um, for a net of minus three. And for seven, you're either, the remainder is either gonna go up by one or it's gonna go from six to zero for a negative six, right? So what we want is we want the gains from all of the plus ones to actually equal the losses 
from the minus three or the minus six or whatever it is. In general, it's going to be the loss is going to be a minus one. So you're either going to have a plus one or a minus one for two. You're going to either have a plus one or a minus two for three. You're going to either have a plus one or a minus three for four. You're going to have either you're going to have a plus one or a minus four for five, and so on and so forth. And you want the gains to be equal to the losses. And logically, if you think about it, um, there should be a lot more plus ones than the minuses because each time you add something, you're only adding one. But when you subtract something, you're um, removing more than one. Like for example, if you if you're if n was uh, if n had remainder nine when you divided by ten, n plus one is going to go down nine from this from when you divide it by 10, right? It goes from nine to zero. And we want to look for, we want to look for two digit positive integers, which satisfy Rn equals to Rn plus one. Essentially what that means is, let's see. So let's say I have a number that is, that is equivalent to negative one mod, a few different things. Let's say it's equivalent to negative one mod six and it's equivalent to negative one mod seven. Then what would happen is a bunch of the other stuff would increase by one. However, just for a six and seven, you decrease by five and decrease by six. So what do we want? Okay, so essentially what you have is you're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select one of these two options, one of these two options and so on and so forth. And we're gonna add all of them up. And since, since, since each of these is like a possible difference between N and N plus one for mod two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you just want, you just want this, in the end, you just want the sum to be zero. So you just, you just want the sum of, you just want the sum of all the things you selected to be zero. And so the question becomes, well, how many ways can you really select the plus ones in the minus threes, minus fours, minus fives? Okay, so first of all, if you select a minus, you cannot select a plus for the same number. For example, you can't select both this and that. So the first thing I'm gonna claim is that you can have at most three subtractions. And that's going to be these three, because if, um, if n is equivalent to negative one mod two, three, and four, you're going to really be subtracting six, because minus one minus two minus three for the r of n plus one. And if th and that would mean that essentially um, from n to n plus one, each of the remainders mod five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and 10 would increase by one. And those plus those six plus ones would balance out with the negative one minus two and minus three for a net change of zero between R of n and Rn plus one. But you see, you quickly see that you can't have, you, you can't do that because if, if n is, um, if n is negative one mod two and three, it's also negative one mod six. Like you can think about it. If, if my number leaves a remainder of one when divided by two and a remainder of two when divided by three, it's got to leave a remainder of five when divided by six. So that obviously doesn't work. So now what I can say is, well, either N is just going to be like, it's just going to have one of these negatives or potentially two of, two of these negatives and the remaining stuff is going to be positive. And I could ask you, why, why can't there be zero negatives? And the answer would be, everything's going to be a positive. So you're going to essentially add nine from Rn to Rn plus one, because all of the remainders are going to increase by one, and none of them are going to decrease. So you're either going to have two negatives or one of them. So let's look at the case where we have one negative. What does that mean? It means that you have eight positives. So you're adding one eight times. And you have to subtract exactly one thing. And in order for the Rn and the Rn plus one to balance out, you have to subtract the same, right? So this would need to be your selection. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10. But 
um, n is equivalent to negative one mod nine. But however, this is this is a this is a problem because if n leaves a remainder of eight when divided by nine. You're also going to have problems with three because, like, for example, if n is equal to eight or 17 or 26, all of these would leave a remainder of two and divided by three, which means that this is impossible because you'd also have to circle minus two if you're circling this minus eight for the nine. And that would clearly not balance out because you're going to end up subtracting 10 from Rn and only adding seven. So that totally eliminates the case where there is exactly one. Um, one negative, which means you must have exactly two negatives. Now, does that mean you have seven positives? So plus seven. And you want your positives and your negatives to balance out. And what that means is that the how much you're subtracting has to add up to seven. And since you're choosing two of them, you, you either have to choose minus one and minus six, minus two and minus five, minus three and minus four. And what that means is that you would need n to be equal. In one of these three cases, um, you need n to be equivalent to negative one, mod two and seven, three and six, or four and five. And you can quickly see that we can start to eliminate some of the cases. Because if n is equivalent to negative one, mod four and five, it leaves a remainder of three when divided by four. So it would be, it's an odd number. And that odd number means it leaves a remainder of one when divided by two, which means um, you'd be circling this as well as this and that. But that can't work because um, you, can't, you can't have three negatives and it would, it, the positives wouldn't really bounce out with the negatives. So you can eliminate this case. Similar fashion, if n is equivalent to negative one mods three and six, well, um, if n leaves the remainder of five when divided by six, it's also odd, which you, means you'd also have to circle this. And um, Rn and Rn plus one do not balance out. So that eliminates this case as well. And you're just left with n is equivalent to one mods two and seven, negative one mods two and seven. And you can see that there aren't really any restrictions so, because it's totally possible for us to choose this two and this seven without having to modify any of the remainders mods three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, and 10. Right? Which means that, so, th so this is totally legal. And all we need to do is check two digit positive integers that are negative one mods two and seven, or in this case, 13 mod 14. So you can check 13, 27, 41, 55, 69, 83, and 97. And some of these work and some of these don't. For example, 27 doesn't work because it's equal to negative one mod four. If you divide it by four, you get a remainder of three. So when you increase it by one, you're gonna, the remainder mod four is gonna decrease by three, right? That, we didn't want that to happen so we can, Get rid of this 27. Similarly, 41, if you increase it by one, its remainder, when you divide it by six, decreases, which we don't want. 55, if you take its remainder when you divide by eight um, and increase 55 by one, that doesn't work. 69, um, if you increase it by one, its remainder divided by 10 decreases a lot, which we don't want. 83, its remainder mod four also decreases by three, which we didn't want either. We're left with just 13 and 97, and both of these work. Um, and um, we can manually check 13 and 97, or we could just think, okay, it's if you increase it by one, well, 14 um, is not a multiple of three, four, five, six, eight, nine, and 10, which means that the remainders when you divide it by each of those is not going to go to zero. Similarly, 97 going to 98 doesn't cause any problems. So 13 and 97 are our solutions. And there are two of them. So our answer is two. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.